<laughs> he seems he seems legit. Oh wow, that's the Dennis. Only, the it's first been belly laugh today. It's been a whole fucking month, man. I like, know. welcome what, back. What has happened? We I have missed you. Life. I have missed this. I have missed all of the extra work and shit that I have to put into this. Uh, like, uh, welcome back, man. Hey, good to be back. Friendly where where face. have you been? Friendly face. Uh, have I? I've seen you since vacation, but no. No, you have not. Oh my word! Well, vacation is a big topic. We did. Uh, we did. Uh, you did vacation trip, and road then... trip annual road trip number two, uh, Kalamazoo to State College, PA to Washington D.C. to uh, Surf City, Topsail Island, North Carolina to Myrtle Beach. Well, you saw yeah. me Myrtle Beach. I mean, we we briefly uh, had a had a video call, a, a brief uh, virtual interaction. Yes, but I, I have got quite a story to tell you about a uh, artifact. If you remind me later, an artifact that uh, John White found that was. I mean, why don't I remind you right now? Because oh, well, like, let's fucking go. I thought maybe I don't know. I got the agenda from you. It was like three pages of unfinished business. I sure. mean, we we there's so many TV shows that we were like just almost on the cusp of finishing that have now finished that we have to talk about, and then new well, ones that have begun yes, again. I I would, uh, but, I would rather jump in with talking about Succession right away. The, and then we'll, I'll tell you the story about the murder bitch later. Wow, what a tease. You, because you, you slutty because little... I ended up seeing a bit of it again. And as luck would have it, it was probably one of the, if not the best scene in all four seasons of Succession. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to, you saw it with, you saw it too. I've seen I'm going to see if one of two ways to put this. One of what was your favorite scene is one boring way to put it. A more exciting way to put it is. Can you guess which scene I'm suggesting, whether or not it's your favorite scene or not? That's kind of a different <clears> question, <throat> isn't it? I mean, the this particular episode, I don't know. It felt very, oh, yeah, it's this thing again, uh, where it's these high-status important people uh, bidding. There's a bidding war. Which feels like every other fucking episode of Succession before. Well, it's uh, the same bidding war that's been the subject of right, two seasons. I mean, it's, it's, right. it's, it's not like, another one. It's, the it's same. like, uh, who's going to take over daddy's business? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, the best scene of this particular episode, ah, man, uh, it was all very, um, like, I, I liked uh, how. Uh, who is it? Tom? Uh, how how Tom and uh, Shiv. And, and Shiv, uh, they had that they had that moment of like, well, uh, this is like this is like where we are now. Uh, I kind of liked that particular that that in fact uh, th 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 that like. That, that so, my favorite scene. That so is, is so are we are we divorcing or or yeah, not? Yes. And let's just lie down here on the bed and hold each other's hands and uh, decide what. They did decide the decision was made before the holding of the hands. In fact, that, that that is the scene that I saw a second time and reveled in it and was particularly. Are you telling me that I that I that I, I won the prize? Yes, you won the prize. Sweet. Which is you get to see the second season of Succession. Second. Or the second episode of the fourth season. But uh, what I was struck by is exactly what you said, is is Tom's incredible sensitivity. The other thing that happened in this that sets that up is this fact that Tom, independent of Shiv, is now in a very tight position with uh, uh, the old man. Right. And that very awkward, uncomfortable scene where <laughs> where he said, uh, he said, are we, you know, are we, uh, are we good? And the old man said, yes. And, and, and he said, well, that's heartening. It's very heartening. I feel yes. very heartened. Heartened, uh, yes. And they show the old man just rolling his eyes. <laughs> but the setup was the uh, value with which the old man holds Tom in the first place. But the second place is the scene where he was on the phone with the three kids running point. Right. And uh, he hasn't been at that level 
He's been no, no, wanting no. to. But now that he's proven, and his big proof, of course, was that he was going to prison. All the stuff he said about prison, I found so hilarious. And he had a he had a prison consultant, which is just so funny, you know, who was preparing him for prison. And there's this scene that's worth capturing for the show notes if you if you got the minute where he talks about the toilet being his friend, and also his cooler, <laughs> and right. and a, a whole list of of. Uh, of uses of the prison toilet. You're grabbing your cat again, aren't you? It's not a kitten anymore, is it? Fuck off, cat. It's yeah. a cat. Yeah. Uh, we we asked uh, we asked the machine today how old the cat is in people years, and it was like 25. Really? Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it, cat. Uh... Hi. Anyway. Uh, so. Hey, Hugh. Uh, well, we and, have so. Uh, my my. I'll go ahead with my news before you talk about your amazing trips. That's it for succession. Yes, I mean I think we need to wait a little bit more for another for another uh, dip into the well. Of well, what's yes, going I just on. I want to say a couple things though because I had prepared some notes as you might okay. might have imagined. Um, is that this is the first episode that it appears for a moment that uh, the old man has lost, and it's his, been look, but that's been teased since forever. Yes, well, if if you're not, but you're not fool enough to believe it, are you? Oh well, huh? huh. You know what he's going to do? Here's my prediction, and 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 this may be it for this segment. He's not going to sell the company at the end of the day to no go thereby eliminating the inheritance that the children would have to do their thing, their dirty right. deed with the newspaper conglomerate. Right. That's what will happen yeah. because he would rather, he would rather not sell the company and keep doing it, even though he really hates it and is shown in the closing scene where he's watching what appears to be a terrible news program. And in fact, the first one we've seen in four years, the only time we've actually seen what that company produces. Hmm. And is it Foxy? Huh? Is it it's uh, no, it, it wasn't so much uh, uh, Foxy because it wasn't focused on content. It was focused on imagery. And okay. while he was watching it, he was berating Sid, who's the skinny neck dude, I think, who uh, is one of the principals in the company. He called him at 11, <laughs> after the 11 o'clock news. And he said, what is it with this fucking guy who looks like a fucking somebody you plucked out of a bowling alley and put a fucking toupee on his head? And I watched the late news and other people watched the late news. Yes, and you lost it. I remember that. Now, that scene showing him tired, old and fat. That really resonated with you? Uh, just because it, it, it was unusual for an actor and a director it was it was purposeful, I should say, not unusual. It was obviously purposeful to show him with a big gut. It isn't something they would do by accident. The gut's either in the scene or it's not in the scene. It was prominent in the scene, M made noteworthy by the fact that he had on a three-colored checkered shirt, which was going to make sure that we looked at his fucking big belly. And that's what they're leaving us with is that this old guy is so tired of this, and here he has this no-go deal in, in, in uh, Skarsgård, Who's the the uh, the, the no go guy? Who's got one of the juiciest roles I think he's ever had? Right, that guy. Right, is. he shows up in the next uh, inning here uh, at a at a party because they're really going with this no go deal. And what's striking about him is that everybody else is dressed up, and he is the prototypical eccentric, you know, multi multi billionaire. Right. Sure, shows up with like this bright gold lame uh, sport jacket that's like a size too big for him. And, uh, and, 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 and there you can, you can imagine, but <clears throat> that's, I find it intriguing. I, I don't in any way, uh, consider this, uh, repetitious or as you had expressed earlier, because it is such a perfect continuation of what is ending up to be, you know, a hundred, you know, 60 hour movie, you know, because the continuity of it from last year, it picked up where they left off. And yeah. I was, I was like, amazed you know, that they didn't do a previously on, uh, uh, to start with this. They like, did for I, me. They didn't for me. So then they also did a what's to come for me. Well, I guess they have lower expectations for your 
no. intelligence. I don't know. No, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm the only one who received the preview. They, they wonder what I think. Okay. Based that on that, sense. they either will or won't change a lot of it. Right. Believe so. Me, I'm close to these people. Right. Uh, okay. So, like that, uh, I'm looking forward. Like this is going to be our next uh, series that we follow. I think because it's the thing that we both get and uh, subscribe to and, and watch. I'm trying to. I'm trying to so, think out loud here of what. What are the other ones that are coming? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, freaking um, uh, Bill Hader. Uh, Barry. Barry. And the previews are out. Okay. And, and as you know well. Also the final season, I believe. Uh, I think. I don't believe that's been stated. This has been stated about succession. Okay. That's the final season. But I'm not sure about Barry. I don't think so. Not necessarily. But anyway, but he's in prison. Yes. Um, in, in the trailer, which we knew was where he was headed. Um, and I think that it's going to turn very, very dark. One can only hope. Uh, so stay tuned to this channel in so, the future. Anyway, episodes. your news. I, I, so uh, my little bit of news was that uh, I was able to catch a very bad form of the flu. Uh, flu influenza B it was Ooh. that I tested positive for. Not influenza. A. Yeah. If Lord. Flu. That's what it stands for. Uh, well, the way you say it, though, it sounds so influenza, much worse than the yes. flu. And so I was, uh, I was a full week in bed, more or less. Like I did nothing. I did no work. I was just a zombie. Uh, but I was able to watch a bunch of like TV shows and stuff because. It's like I wasn't good for anything, but like right. also I had to spend my waking hours doing something. Uh, so I uh, I got caught up on on things, and I asked my my online audience uh, what sort of shows I should watch, and one of them one of them that I got back was this uh, this TV show called Fleischman in Trouble. Fleischman. Uh, Fleischman. It huh. it uh like it sounds like it's about uh these forty something people. Uh the star of the show is Jesse Eisenberg. Oh yeah, yeah, I like Jesse. I just saw him in um re rewatch the entire uh thing with him and um well anyway, I get yeah. to remember all and that. uh uh Claire Danes is another one and uh it's it's about the midlife crises of turning 40 ish in New York city. Uh -huh. And it's about, uh, you know, some, some of them are getting a divorce. Uh, some of them have small children. Uh, others are deciding whether or not to have children. Others are, uh, going through this, like, you know, I expected to be successful by 40, but it's like I'm not yet. And just going through all of these psychoses uh, of turning 40 uh, in, in, in New York City with this, with this, with this amazing cast. And uh, some, of, like, um, some of them are like putting their careers ahead of their children and others are putting their children ahead of their careers. And how many, uh, how many couples? Uh, there's like uh, th three really couples uh, in it. Who's uh, Jesse Eisenberg's uh, woman? Jesse Eisenberg is is divorcing Claire Danes. Oh dear! And, Those are some good chops. And uh, Claire Danes is, uh, if you remember, if you watched Homeland. Oh yes. Uh, uh, Claire With our Danes, friend uh, Lewis, uh, Damien Lewis, yes. whose new series is is starting this uh, spring. <laughs> That's the other watch. Okay. He's playing a but, British spy. But Claire Danes does her uh, her lower lip um, quivering, like quivering and insane crying uh, level that we have learned from Homeland. Uh, she's so fucking good at that. Serious uh, stuff. And it's um e anyway it's a it's a fun fun ish sort of romp, but also it like. 
like I see my as a as a forty something myself. Uh, I see myself in all of these characters uh-huh. in what they're going through and yeah. all of their uh, psychological yeah. uh, fuck upness. Yeah, uh, it was very uh, very good in that in that way. Um, yeah. But and and then in the end, it uh, you know it it ends okay. But uh, but it's it's this travel through what it means to be a and a, and it's super uh, like rich white person um, lens of, of of being forty and yeah. and going through uh, not having published your book that you thought you were going to have yeah. published by now, et cetera. So that sort of thing. Uh, so that was, that was fun. And, and who, do you recall the other actors in the, you said a great cast, but you only mentioned two very good. Uh, Lizzie Kaplan is, is another one who, uh, would, if you had told me that name, I wouldn't have remembered right. her, Indeed. but she's, uh, she's the, she's, uh, the perfect, uh, best friend sort of foil for, yeah. for everything. Yeah, and uh, no other really famous people, but um, but good good actors. But but a very good uh, showing in general of uh, of a six. How many episodes? Uh, oh, six. Uh-huh. Th- no, no. There's um, uh, ten. One, two, three, four, five. So, yeah, six episodes, uh, and like. One of them is a is a lawyer, and the other is a doctor, and they're like, "Oh, like uh, you know, life should be good now because I'm because I'm uh, at this level." And not so much. Yeah. So well, yeah. you would you would enjoy since uh, we're talking about Jesse Eisenberg is that he directed. Um, God, I wonder if it's him. You have to check. It may not be him, but it's Garden State with Natalie Portman. But I wonder if I got the same guy in mind check garden state because i know that's the name of the movie but the no it was zach it wasn't it wasn't eisenberg it was uh it was uh nope oh, sorry yeah yeah there's a bunch of uh, white boys that look the same uh well in a, in a, yeah, zach, in a zach braff very general so what's the name zach braff braff that well and well now that i mentioned it know that it's a great movie and if you like natalie portman you will love this movie okay she is just check the best out. character <laughs> so uh that happened and also you went on vacation oh uh, yeah while i was while i was sick you asshole uh so tell me about sorry man but we did trip. uh we did uh me and uh, brother jojo did the uh road trip again i traveled out to state college which is a about a nine hour drive from here left at seven ish got there at five-ish and and uh started what ended up being a, about a two-week binge it was uh it was it binge was just that it was just sleeping and and drinking and and having nothing but fun and playing bocce on the on the beach but we went to state college first and this in the, the miracle of it in the middle of the winter and you know winters are harsh here i'm looking at the forecast as i got as i got there and kind of on the way there i was checking it out and realized that in two days after I got there, two days after I got there, it was going to be two days of 50 degree plus weather. In fact, one day it was 55 and sunny. Wow. So my younger younger or youngest brother, who's the fishing uh, expert, I said, man, don't wait till Thursday to come. Come on Wednesday because Wednesday and Thursday is supposed to be the 50 degree fish trout. And I said, Joe, do you have any trout fishing streams nearby? And Joe, who's been a trout fisherman for pretty much all his life on a very periodic basis, says, I don't know. So I Google <laughs> trout fishing streams near me. Yes. And the most famous trout creek in all of Pennsylvania yeah, baby. showed on a map quest that the that was 3.5 miles away. It was nice. in town and he didn't know about it. And we ended up fishing all of this called Spring Creek. We ended up fishing higher and higher and higher and higher until we got to uh until we got to a town that that where the the, the culmination of the water went through the middle of the town with waterfalls and, and a park. And we found, a, we, we went there and fished and we all caught fish and uh, they were real tiny compared to what we're used to. Cause it was a tiny stream, but I'll send you a couple of these, but uh, we had a time of our lives uh, in the water. And then we went to this little town um, 
uh, let's see, what's the hell's the name of it? Uh, I'll remember it in a minute. But I got a nose for dive bars. Mm-hmm. I can go into any town and I'll find the dive bar that just is, is it's always. Yes, you would. So it's, of course. So I said, you know what? I'm going to ask. I said, what, you know, we were, we went to the, we went to a place that was like newly open and, and kind of a modern motif and it was a little stiff. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I said, am I ain't no I? dive bar? No. You said. And I, I wish I hadn't gone. It was like a, it was, a, it was like a bar in a restaurant kind of thing. And I asked some. I asked a waitress. I said, "Where's well, another bar nearby, or whatever?" And she said, "Oh yeah, there's this one up the street. It's like really rad, man. I mean, you go there and it's like real laid back, and and you can still smoke in there. This place is so old, and you'll see the sign." So we went wandering around, and my brothers were with me. And sure enough, we found it and went in. And there was a list of people that was about ten people deep who were banned. Nice. <laughs> now, when you're in a bar where there's a list that deep of people banned. Of course, you got to ask the question as if you don't know the answer. Why are they banned? They're always banned for the same reason. There's no other reason that you're banned. It's violent behavior. That's it. Okay. And uh, I asked the bartender as we were sitting there what it would take to be able to get my brother on the banned list. <laughs> nice. Because <laughs> I thought it would be a point good of question. infamy. Good question. A good question. A point of infamy. He said, oh, you can't do that unless you really, unless you start a fight. And then he leaned over to me. He said, or unless there was a huge gratuity involved. Which nice. I, I didn't do. In fact, I probably right. should have. Now that I think about it, but um, so here's we, here's uh, eighty five bucks. Ban my brother. Yeah, bingo. Right, bingo. Here's to that. So we, uh, <clears throat> Jojo and I went to a couple breweries that I'd never been to. One was real cool near another near another maybe this same trout stream, which had a lot of tributaries to it. And State College, as you may not know, Pennsylvania, as you may not, I'm not sure where you've ever traveled there, but it's one of the most beautiful parts of the country in the way that the huge hills, escarpments, and canyons are formed all through Mm -hmm. the part of the state where we travel. Hmm. In fact, one of our routes coming all the way from North Carolina past D.C. traffic takes us off the interstate and over a mountain, ends up on a two-lane highway called Stumpy Lane, where the road is so narrow they couldn't afford to put two stripes in the middle because they wouldn't fit. There's literally one stripe because nice. it's so narrow. Up and lane. up and up and up, following beautiful creek, and get to the top of it, and you come down. Now, a year ago, on road trip number one, yeah, I followed the advice of, of Mary and took this route, and we laughed because the name of my other brother's uh, stump removal business is is, is, is trying to say stump removal, and we call him Stumpy. So the fact we're on Stump Lane meant something, you know, from the sure. familial sense. And, uh, and as we were, this is a year ago now, as we're coming down the mountain, there's a town, Pennsylvania town called Huntington, and we were within an hour of home, and my, uh, my beer alert was going off. Yeah, and beer uh, alert. I, looked, yes. I looked over at my brother, and I said, uh, damn, I'm thirsty. How about you? And he looked at me, and he said, yes, I am. My beer alert. I said, Mary, I said, Mary, brewery's near me. In 500 feet, take the next left, take the following right for 500 feet, and your destination will be there. It was like 700 feet away. Nice. You go to this bar. And it's all made out of uh, real pine wood, including a, a debarked varnished pine tree that looks to be holding up the roof, a pine bar, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And a great time was had by all. And I was thrilled, of course, because they had three ambers. Yeah, they man. had like 12 beers and three of them were ambers. So we're, we're, we're talking, we're having fun, fun, fun. And, and this is the, the funny story of that, uh, that event and the oddness of it and just the serendipity of it where, where my brother, I'm, I'm turning, getting ready to leave. And my brother, I turn to my brother to see if he's coming. And as he's, as he's taking a step, he's got some type of a cracker or something in his mouth and he's starting to put it in his mouth. And I snatched it out of his mouth and popped it in my mouth and mm-hmm. started chewing on it. And I sat standing going, oh, my God, what is this? It was a dog biscuit that the place made out of the, the uh, used hops. Sure. And the used, the used uh, uh, you know, materials from, from the beer. And my brother was so cagey about this. He knew that if I saw him taking something to eat, that right. I would snatch it. And well I done. did. And, well done, and the brother. place had like... Four staff and including the brewmaster who was there. And we we were having fun. There were about five or six people there, including a Ohio State fan. I gave this guy such shit in a way that was funny, but maybe not so funny, you know. But anyway, that's the story of the bar. So now speed up to year two. That was just all background. Year two, we're absolutely stunned that Mary takes us this way again. I don't know why we would be. But when I Mary said my, being the, my, my map quest. 
my yeah, Google lady. Maps. When uh, okay. when when I said I that that. when I said to my brother on the way back, we were several hours in the trip. It's a it's a, a almost a, 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 a it's a ten hour trip back. I said, are we going to go through Huntington? He said, no, no, that's that's way out of the way. I said, well, that's too bad. I wouldn't mind going to that brewery again. And uh, he said, no, it, you know, blah blah blah. And so we we found ourselves on Stumpy Lane and remembered it finally. You know, that's oh my god, we've been here. He couldn't barely remember, but he's got uh, alcohol induced uh, Alzheimer's anyway, so we don't expect a lot out of his memory. Don't we all? Yeah. But uh, as as we came down into the town, of course, and crossed the mighty Juanita River, uh, which Juanita. is enormous. Yes. Um, we uh, uh, came down and, and, and went to our bar. And here's a, just one quick second of background. The whole trip, I was in a quest. We were in a quest for live music. And we never really found it. We, we, saw, it, we saw an outstanding bluegrass duo of a fiddle player, mandolin player, and a guitar player that was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. But that was on the, like, the first day of the trip. And then for another two weeks, we never find it. Not in Washington, not in uh, not in uh, in Surf City, North Carolina, not in Hampstead, North Carolina, all the places we were. And so when we show up at this bar, there's a duo, two guitar players who are going to open up in 15 minutes. They kicked the shit out of this music. My brother and I just looked at each other and clicked glasses and said, it's going to be a good day. Nice. So sweet. A lot more stories to all that. Wow. So, including a bocce story, remind me of that whenever you want to hear it. Whenever I want to hear it. So uh, we should we have some like loose ends to tie up uh, from people that have been listening to our previous one like like four m- months ago. Uh, we have uh, Your Honor, and we have uh, The Last of Us. Where we had not seen the end of The Last of Us last time we spoke, but now we have. And the same for Your Honor. Well, let's dispense with Your Honor first. Let's dispense with Your Honor. Your thoughts. I mean, it makes sense that it had to conclude in a courtroom. And uh, I did not at all mind the... Uh, the familial murder that sort of put an end to one of the storylines. Uh, I don't know. It's like, uh, I'm glad that little man is more or less free, but, uh, and like, it, it seems like everything's going to keep going how it is. And little man is free, but like, uh, escaped on, on, um, with a different identity, and and there you go. I don't know. And a scale of one to ten, it was. I mean, we had a low bar. I, uh, we'll give it a seven. Huh. As a uh, as a finale. I give it a six, and um, it was uh, uh, pretty predictable. Uh, the acting was great. The woman who plays the lawyer for Little Man was was outstanding. Yes. The courtroom stuff was 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 quite good. I thought it on point, and I'm a critic of the show because of their. Uh, what I would think that they, they the way that I feel about it is that they're 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 insulting their audience by acting like we're stupid enough to think that X, Y or Z is in any way realistic. Mm-hmm. And and so I was I'm happy to. In, in fact, I thought of this while I was watching it. I'd be happy to report to you that I thought that a good part of that was good. What, what I continued to to, to to criticize, though, is the the cartoon character of uh, uh, Big Mo. Um, and which had such an opportunity to provide some some uh, some emotional uh, uh, entry into this into this one, but instead she plays a caricature of a cartoon character of, of a of a black drug dealer, blah blah blah. Um, but here's 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 the point that I'm certain to make, and, and I don't really want to talk about it because I don't think it's a very good show. I would give the show overall over two seasons a four. I would give this particular episode a six. Sure. Um, but the ending of it, of course, was stupid. And and they would have us believe that a, that an assistant uh, a U.S. attorney general went to a gate of a prison and dropped off a prisoner. And the way that he entered the prison was by walking through this huge gate in the front of the prison. Right. Yeah, I remember there, there, were, there were parts of it where I was like, uh, this doesn't oh, seem legit. Are you kidding me? You know, and and the thing is, while I've got this huge stomach for these absolutely science fiction dramas, like of course, 
The Last of Us, I have no stomach for what it intends to be a life, a realistic life drama. And, and, in, and in the case, add insult to injury in my, certainly my favorite city in the United States, I don't think they do it justice. Huh. And uh, I think they do a good job of showing the city, frankly, and I love where they go. The, the, uh, the headquarters for uh, Big Mo and, and Little Mo, and as it turns out, Little Man for a little while, <laughs> uh, was Bufa's, which is a bar I've been to and in a neighborhood where I uh, hung out a lot. Nice. And so all of that kind of neighborhood stuff uh, is always, you know, great. But in a movie like this, unlike Tremmy, which is set there as well, which is very well done, this, this show is so bad that it doesn't give me much joy to see great scenery. Right. Um, and I don't think that Michael uh, in any way, in any way, is a character that is, is credible for Louisiana. He's got no accent. He's got no Louisiana right. feel to him. There's, there's, there's nothing about him that makes us think he's a Louisiana animal, a Louisiana animal. And one of the reasons is Louisiana animal, a Louisiana like animal. They don't show him, they don't show him partying and you cannot be a Louisiana unless you're partying. That's the state motto. Hmm. Fuck yes. Let's have a good time. That's it. Um, so I actually, and this is my final point, I suppose. I'm glad to see it's over. Yeah. I'm, I'm also happy to stop talking about this yes. show yes. because it's, it was a thing it was uh, it was a thing where people making drama television uh, try to over um, to over salt the the product they were making and you know it got over seasoned and it was meh okay whatever yeah. Right. So let's switch to what, what we what I think we both agree is a so much better show. But I may be more enthusiastic than you, if I recall, because of your kind of anti, uh, you know, zombie esque approach. Uh, but you may have you may have gotten past that by now. You'll have to. Why don't you start there? Uh, yeah. So uh, because, as I have mentioned previously, uh, I have been listening to a podcast where the creators of the show talk about each episode uh, as it has been released. Uh, I have a lot more sympathy for what they are showing and what they aren't and what was in the original material and what wasn't. Um, and uh, it's my understanding that in the, it was kind of a, conflicting moment for the people playing the game because typically when you're playing these apocalypse games you are saving the world right and it is uh -huh. your job as the central protagonist to save the world uh, but in this particular game uh, Joel who is the main protagonist uh, chooses to not save the world like he chooses to save uh, no, I rather than rather than put the world uh, first, I'm putting my my love for this girl first, and that, uh, from what I've heard, uh, was very conflicting for the for the game players because half the game players were like, "Yeah, fuck this, I love this girl just like Joel does. Let's save her," and the other half were like, "No, we are here to save the world. Uh, let's kill this girl if we have to." Because we're going to save the world, and that um, that conflict was always there in the original game, and uh, had to be dealt with. Um, like in apparently the game, a lot of it felt like you were in control, but then like the actual like plot twists, you were not in control. So like you could not yeah. choose to not save. Uh, right. Well, Ellie. and so your your uh, perspective, and I think I may have said this last episode, your perspective of this series, similar and, and, and certainly appropriately so to the uh, after show interviews is all about the game and how it is the same or different from the game, because the game, in fact, it is it is the thing because True, I, but, my, but, my, but my original uh sense of it has nothing to do with the game because no but I, your your perspective of it is described often in terms of the game true uh, after having listened to how things were different yes right right and and i don't have any of that in fact i stopped watching 
the post show interviews mm -hmm. because I didn't like hearing about the game. And um, I thought I'm <laughs> saying that to you as a result of your most recent monologue about uh, the game. Uh, and so, but I'll tell you this, that the, the, the one of the ending scenes where Joel ends up killing about 40 uh, yes. guards in the hospital, Dudes, or yep. fireflies in the hospital, was the first absolute time I saw the connection with a game. Interesting. And I saw it, I saw it remarkably well, and I thought, holy shit, particularly in what I think is, to, to date for me, one of the single most powerful moments in the series is when the doctor walked to him and said, you can't do that, and he shot him right between the fucking eyes. Yeah, killing the that doctor was, is super controversial. Because that was like, holy shit, Joel, what have you done, man? But the doctor was coming at him with a scalpel. <clears throat> right, but also the doctor was like the only one that we have that we know about that has any idea of how to solve this global problem it, 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 it stopped it stopped and joel was just like to joel fuck off. it stopped mattering to joel about that many 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 hours before he shot that his <laughs> his his entire motivation to save her began as you recall in the cell when he learned from the firefly leader african-american actor who is fabulous um that she, you know, and of course, she said, and this is where fantasy sets in, that the, the only way that, that they could get the cure was to kill her, which, in fact, there's been stuff written, which I've suspected about the, the fact that any doctor would say no. But that, that, wasn't, that, that wasn't known to anyone, not even, especially to, to Ellie, until, until the very end. That it would kill her? I mean, she, uh, it's, she, she was told... Did. She was told, "Look, we're going to operate on you." To like, she wasn't told she would die. No, right, exactly. So uh, that, but see, that's the point of Joel saving her. That uh, it was up to her to have the choice. Exactly. Yes. Not, exactly. You're, you're exactly and, right. And that's a little bit of a higher uh, level or a higher plane of motivation than simply saving the girl. You know, uh, it, because one would assume that if the girl said, "Don't save me, I want to do this," then he would say, "It's your decision." And what I love about it is that it 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 tickles all of these like uh, proper philosophical mm, like mm, problems, like the trolley problem, and the uh, like. Does it make sense to uh, to flip a switch that saves one that that saves three people and kills another person? Yeah, and th that sort of scenario, and and. The, the extreme example of the trolley problem is uh, there are five patients in this hospital that need five different organs, and a, and a young, uh, healthy person walks into the hospital. Does it make sense to chop up that person and take all their organs to, to make all these people uh, Probably healthy? Probably if she says so. Right, exactly. And, it, and it's so, uh, like, the... I love these scenarios where, like, mathematical logic uh, bumps so hard against uh, our emotional, like, value system, just as as emotional beings. Yes. Anyway, uh, yes. Well, I'm, I'm, so, I'll uh, tell you, unlike unlike Succession, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Unlike Your Honor, this is a series that I I, I can't wait to return to. The one thing I will tell you is that. When considering the relationship on camera that developed between Ellie and Joel, which uh, 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 became is the subject of a lot of a lot of discussion, um, it makes me wonder whether or not season two will stray significantly from the game if the game, in fact, has a dire ending for Ellie, because at the end of the day, the show is about making money not about staying true to the game. That's a high priority, but not as high as making money. Just like Game of Thrones made it a high, very, very high priority to stay true to the book when it became clear that the book wasn't as attractive to viewers mm -hmm. on screen as it would be to have changes, they changed it. And uh, I must agree after reading all of the stuff that the changes they made were good because the, 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 and it could be the case with this. It was just better. 
But I'd be interested to see that because that her chemistry and the fan love of the woman who plays Ellie and her, uh, uh, you know, just her carefree uh, attitude toward acting and her real life world, you know, uh, right. and, uh, you know, she's British. I don't know if you've seen an interview from her, but um, she's one of those actors like Damien Lewis, who for the first time you hear him, you say, wow, good accent. <laughs> Funny. They did do a uh, release on Damien Lewis's new movie, too, by the way, if we want to talk about that a second. Uh, I have not heard her interviewed, uh, but he, uh, yes, it is. Uh, it's going to be one of these things where, uh, yes, uh, the what's more important to the story is what's more important to te the television story, uh, and if it fears from the book, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and so that's, that's totally fine. Well, um, let me, uh, let, let me ask you this. Um, uh, well, I'll tell you the Bacha game that I got a question for you. Cause I want you to talk about Wes Anderson's new release. Yes. Um, but one of the things that we did at the beach and we went to Danny's uh, place where his dad used to live and left him in, um, Hempstead surf city It's right on the border, but right across the, the, the bridge to, uh, topsail, uh, Island. And we went to Topps Island, of course, and it was wonderful, 60, 70 degree weather, a little windy, but bright sun. And we played bocce, the three of us, for just hours and hours and hours at a time. Mm -hmm. And Danny was 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 the the runaway winner at these at these outings. Well, Danny left and went home, and my brother Jojo and I were there for another time. And we did some fishing there, and we didn't catch anything. And so bocce became the, the the premier event, and it was just gorgeous out, uh, sweaters and sweatshirts, but just great. And uh, the last day we were there, I said, "All right, this is going to be the concluding bocce match, one on one." And we began. We went Winner to the beach. Takes all. We went to the beach. We began playing bocce, and we got back. We continued playing bocce. We uh, and we culminated with me uh, serving him uh, a, uh, I must say, a, a, a gourmet meal of uh, flounder, uh, just fabulous. And yes. um, the end score after twelve games of bocce was Joe zero, Dennis 12. <laughs> so, And I promised them I wouldn't tell anybody. So our entire listening audience is, understands the lie that I told them. You destroyed course. that. It's just destroyed. Sometimes, I won, the game in, sometimes I won the game in five throws. Five throws in a row and it's over. Well. It was fun. Oh, so tell me. Yes. Your communication to me about the new Wes Anderson release Yes, I found fascinating because the language you use is just all Eric. I mean, it is Eric esque in its description. So tell tell our listening audience what you so, wrote me. So I, I I discovered that there's this new West Anderson movie. Uh, I don't know where I Comment. saw about it, but it it's so fucking West Anderson, like all beyond beyond West Anderson. It's it, 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 it's Wes Anderson uh, to the fourth power. Like it, it, it uh, everything is so uh, symmetrically choreographed and it's also like ye olde timey, but also uh, just very, very uh, so, different. And uh, so the most amazing part of the trailer to me was to see the list of top actors in the industry sure, right. and and understand that the trailer which was quite lengthy had could not none of them. include all of the cast members right. because there wasn't time including we never saw jeff goldblum right or ed norton or any, any of the yeah 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 it was it was just all uh like these are all the people that are in this in this movie it's because i'm fucking wes anderson and i can and ask them to come come i here can have them come and do uh, a two day shoot and I don't know what, what the hell they, they get paid for that. But, uh, it's just like, they, he's at a, he's at a level that I think is, I, he's probably higher than like, uh, Spielberg. Like well, it's, if, if it's, Spielberg I wouldn't describe says, it as a level. I would describe it as a place because he yeah. is, he is a director in his own space there's nobody, no, nobody, no one directs close. like him, nobody. And so, if you want to talk about Spielberg or or uh, uh, 
you know anybody for that matter. You're talking about somebody in the in the common understanding of the film uh, uh, industry, right? right? This is not that. This is not that. This couldn't be more different. Yeah, this is come, cinema. Come for four days, and we're going to work you into this into this film. And you know, if you're Samuel L. Jackson, you know, we're going to fucking work you into this in uh, in one scene where you say, you know. Uh, why are these towels wet? Is she in it? No, I just made oh. that up. But like, <laughs> but like, that's the sort of thing where like he could be he he could be in one of the scenes just being like, why are these towels wet? And that would be enough. Um, hey, speaking of Samuel L. Jackson cameos, uh, during my uh, flu downtime, I for the first time. I'm so embarrassed about this, but I'm pretty sure it's for the first time. I watched the movie Goodfellas. Are you kidding me? And I I know so many of the tropes. Like, the Goodfellas is in my cultural understanding. Like, I know so many of the bits, but I don't think I've ever watched it all the way through. And so I did not know that Samuel L. Jackson was, uh, was, was briefly in that movie. Remind me what he did. I don't remember him in the movie. Uh, he was a guy named uh, Stax, I think, who was a, a drug dealer and uh, was briefly there, but then briefly also got uh, whacked. Got, got whacked. You uh, know, I do kind of remember that. It was when like he was like super young and, and skinny, and yeah. and and I was just like, damn. So, uh, and so, uh, just in weird um, symmetry. Uh, to that movie, which was basically Ray Liotta was the protagonist. Oh my God. Uh, Recently uh, speaker. deceased. And, uh, but, and, but I also saw his last movie uh, titled Cocaine Bear. Ray Liotta's? Yes. Have you heard of I Cocaine Bear? Think, oh, yes, 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 yes. I it, went, it went fucking viral uh, last Christmas uh, as like, this is the craziest fucking movie ever. Uh, it's about this bear that you know really loves cocaine, and uh, it's it is that, uh, but it's it's just one of these fun, uh, stupid movies. And who's like, the lead actress again? I'm blanking her name. She's in a lot of funny stuff. Uh, the lead actress. Uh, that's hard to say. There's several. Uh, there's several lead. Um, uh, Carrie. Russell. Oh, I didn't know that. I think that's not who I'm thinking of, but uh, there's a comedian. Uh, Carrie Russell is the, is the primary uh, actress, but she's like the mother uh, in, in, in this, but also uh, I don't know. It's, it's super stupid. Like it's, uh, but sometimes that's the kind of movie you want to watch. Like you, yeah. you're looking for something that's just like not going to challenge you uh, intellectually at all. I just want to fucking laugh. And uh, and this is a super dumb movie. Um, and the the creator of the movie is um, you know Elizabeth Banks. Who uh, yes, that's who I'm thinking of. I thought she started it as well. No, no, no. But uh, but she's she's amazing in, in lots of stuff. Uh, Did she direct but, it? She did. She write it? She, she directed. I don't know about writing, uh, but she was very much in charge of what the hell happened there. And and like <laughs> I heard an interview with her where uh, she talked about how like there was a real news story that there yes. was a real fucking yes. bear I've that, seen that really got into uh, cocaine and really got fucking into cocaine. And... Uh, it just seemed like such a stupid, yeah, funny Daffy, thing to nobody could make it up. Yeah, and anyway, it was a it was a fun ride. So. Well, I will uh, I will switch to weather as we uh, we we peter out our our uh, get back together again broadcast. But I should send you a picture of two inches of snow today, <clears throat> all of Indeed. which is gone, and the bright sun is out, just as weather people uh, predicted today. It's still cold, thirty two, but this Sunday, fifty degrees, and we're going to take. The first hike of spring, going toward uh, uh, Lake Michigan in a uh, 38 mile uh, uh, walk 
mm-hmm. that is uh, built on the top of uh, old railroad track. Um, uh, You've mentioned this previously in yes. other years. We yes. go walk a couple miles, and then next time we go, we start there. And, yes. Until we get there. And then we have this little feast of food and adult beverages once we get It's a great way. By the time we get there, it's really nice and, and early summer already because we, we just do it once a week. So that'll be we, fun. We had freakish weather here today where the temperature got up to in Fahrenheit, it got up to 82 ah, degrees Fahrenheit. Nice. Which is like, you know, shorts, short sleeves and stuff. But uh, but later for this weekend, it's going to be um, it's going to be down to 55. Oh, yeah. So. Well, yeah. Yeah. Trust. It was uh, wind chill today. It was seven. <laughs> Okay. No fun. Well, I'm out of here, my man. So All right. It's been up. good to catch up finally after so many freaking weeks. There's so much to talk about. We got to we gotta catch up. I'm, I'm gl- more than glad that we'll wait for a week before we talk politics again, because I think in a week Trump will be uh, indicted and uh, we can uh, we can visit all that. It's a uh, it's a topic which is all too much discussed on the news. I wish they would stop making him the center of the news universe. But uh, it's pretty remarkable. That is where we are. We are. All right, bro. Peace out, man. See you next time. Love talk. Okay, that's it for episode number 178. We are back, baby. You can find the show notes at happyhour.fm slash 178. You can help support the show at patreon.com slash happyhour. We would love that. And if you give at the gin martinis level, you can watch videos of us talking at each other. Welcome back, everyone. See you next week.